Welcome to This Week in Hospitality Marketing, the podcast show number 271, with your host, Lauren Gray. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hospitality Marketing, the podcast. I'm your host, Lauren Gray, and this is episode number 271. So each week we spend around 20 to 30 minutes sharing the most interesting tools, news, and techniques being used in marketing for the hospitality industry. We also do a quick recap of our weekly live video show, This Week in Hospitality Marketing, which also airs every Friday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern U.S. time. So with that, let's get started. And now, today's new resource tool. So our tools for review this week are actually two of them, and they're more prophetic to the time of year that we're in and in the theme that we'll be talking about and for our technique this week. These are two tools we've yet to review, but are in vain with some that we have dialogued with before. The first is promorepublic.com, and the second is socialb.io. So what do they do? Well, Promo Republic, the reason why I'm bringing this into our toolkit discussion today is Promo Republic, um, it allows you to see all the content creative possibilities that you can post within social. Uh, it tells you, you know, this is National Beer Drinking Day, this is uh, whatever, Peanut Eating Day, whatever. And you might find this to be contrite, but for those that are, are tasked with the perpetual creative content associated with social postings and interaction and engagement, sometimes you need some inspiration. Now, the platform, of course, presents this as, oh, you can just grab this and use this. It already gives you creative. It already gives you layouts. They're very professional looking. They look good, just like Canva. Um, the idea that I would like to propose with this tool is that you just don't take what they give you and post it up as just something to say. We've often discussed about the strategy associated with social media, especially organic social media, and the limited audiences that you're getting because of the restrictions that the platforms provide of, well, if you're not paying, you're not getting in front of a lot of people, um, is to tailor it into your storylines that you have created for your demographics that you're speaking to based on your seasonality, your business cycle, and the time of the year. Now, how this ties together even with our, our news feature today and so forth is we are going through yet another insurgence of our pr- pr- present COVID scenario and tragic as it is, we have to reevaluate who we're marketing to. Uh, We have to look at the fact that we are local and hyper local and that have different designations to that and different reasons and causations for travel. So talking about aspirational travel and future tense is great for 2021 bookings. Uh, And even in some small context, holidays, which we'll get to in our techniques a little bit in a few minutes, but really Talking about stories and the value proposition of what you are is very strongly related to where you are, what's around you, what you can do to communicate and answer questions that guests may have about if they were to travel to you, safety protocols, things that are available and open around in the eminent area, availabilities of things to see and do should they be a part of their time strategy, outside of the more functional aspects of segmentation, which again, we'll talk about more in the techniques conversation today in the podcast. So Promo Republic allows you to finite that and bring up interesting content, schedule it, uh, look for content that's related to topics, and you look for things and see for things that you can adapt and put into the storylines that you're dialoguing with your demographics for the markets that you're looking to try to bring into your hotel. The other one, Social B, is very good also for uh, the newer ones, uh, new people that you have that are trying to do this process for you. Uh, with the change in structure um, within our organizations about bandwidth of actually having warm bodies doing something internally, whether you've had to let go of your, your third parties that were doing it for you, or whether brand has abandoned you, which we've had that discussion before, you're looking to assumptively take on these responsibilities, whether you're directly responsible for it or you have somebody that's helping you with you. Sometimes it's a matter of coordinating and collaborating on a singular platform. Well, Social Bee is a great one for doing that because it allows you to one-stop shop. It can put your social platforms into one place, allowing it to be reviewed before and, and before being sent and authorized before being sent. Plus, it also has great content suggestions. Um, it also allows you to go over and put, do your proper scheduling and so forth. So it gives you a nice, common, stable platform in which to create the fundamental storylines and calendar that you need on the timing and the cycle. As we talked about with social posts many, many times, it's not just the content you decide to, oh, I got to say something today or write something today. You should be well ahead of yourself by one or two weeks when it comes to posts. 
And of course, that also means that in the changing climate that we're in, and changing interests, and of course, changing situations, where you might be have might have been marketing before, all of a sudden that turns into a place you don't want the business from because they may now have turned, say, for instance, into a hotspot, and you don't necessarily believe you can get people to come travel from it, nor maybe do you want them to come from there because they might be bringing unfortunately COVID with them into your hotel environment regardless of your safety protocols so that's an ever-changing environment that even though you're up to two weeks and plus ahead when it comes to your scheduling it's always evaluated and always reviewed to make sure that you are not saying the wrong thing at the wrong time and you know basically saying it's sunny in 72 when in fact there's bad weather or coming and visit us when you really don't want them to come because of the current change in cycles so our two tools this week our promorepublic.com and socialb.io, which brings us to our technique. Now, for this week's hospitality technique. So our technique this week is based on the conversational topic of a holiday season like no other and what you should be doing about it. So here we are, October 2020. Um, COVID in the Midwest is growing exponentially. Uh, states that didn't have it now have it whatever reasons or political affiliations or whatever, which should not be even a consideration in this, but unfortunately they are in the forefront. Uh, all this is happening. And whether you are getting business from those areas or not, or whether you're in the middle of those areas or not, um, we are facing a holiday season, unlike any that we've had marketing-wise that I've been with and that have been in the industry for decades. <laughs> um, our holidays were based traditionally, historically, for those that have been in the business, that Thanksgiving, uh, the Friday afterwards was uh, the time where everybody crowded around the stores at 5 a.m. or 2 a.m. or 1 a.m. It always kept getting earlier, right? And then they pour in like an ocean of people into the retail stores to snarf up the Black Friday deals that they had been advertising and teasing about for days, if not weeks, in the big Thursday newspaper circular that weighed 20 pounds because of the flyers that were in it. Um, that's not going to happen this year. Also, too, which is not going to happen this year, like it has happened in times past, is a newly developed holiday that was shortly thereafter called Cyber Monday, which was when all of the online functions of those same great super deals that you could order to solicit people to purchase and buy. What we're now being told is, be, don't get together. Let's not gather because we have the potential of making this much worse pandemically. Um, it creates scenarios for families that are struggling to understand how they can still celebrate the family without jeopardizing the family. Uh, what's coming out of this is the potential that families may get together in a more um, in a smaller group or and open air and or and uh, confirming that they're all stabilized as to making sure none of them have COVID so that they're not unfortunately exposing it to their family members. But one thing's probably most certain is that the traditional staying at grandma's house or the parents' house for the holiday season, Thanksgiving in particular being our first one to talk about, is probably unlikely, which opens a window of marketing opportunity for us as hoteliers to basically not to go over and be coining about the, the Halloween season coming up, but it, you know, offer stay with us just in case of having family over scares you where you can go visit family, probably drive market. Not a lot of people might be flying, but I'm sure there'll be more elevated flights because of it, because people still are at a distance and they're still gonna find a way to get home. So flights will pick up. So airport hotels, be mindful of that in some circumstance. But offering the hotels to say, hey, look, have Thanksgiving with the family for dinner, but stay at the hotel safely distance. Marketing idea. The second, which goes back to the retail component of this, is we're already being warned and already our purchasing history is changing. 56% more people are buying online than they have done historically. One because of COVID, two because of convenience. Either way, Black Friday, Cyber Monday are not going to be the same. Already this month, Amazon had their earlier Prime deals than they've ever had before. Um, Best Buy, Target started their great Black Friday-esque deals already. Walmart is having an entire month of November where they're offering their Black Friday deals in the hopes of pushing people to purchase early. Why are they doing this? Well, one, the linchpin of Black Friday and Cyber Monday aren't there anymore as the pivot point. Two, there's a delivery issue that's going to start coming up. FedEx, DHL, uh, U, uh, UPS, um, all of them um, are hiring as much as they can but they're already saying that they're going to be overwhelmed 
already that they're saying by the time the Thanksgiving hits, there will be a lag in delivery. There may be windows where if you don't have it ordered and what have you, that there may be a supply chain issue because of reductions in teams and staff for productions. Also, there is a logistics of delivery issue that will be compounded by this overwhelming tidal wave of online purchasing that's going to go on. So they're saying buy early, buy soon, buy fast. Well, the other suggestion that they have is buy, but do your own pickup in a retail outlet. So if you're going to purchase something, find out if the store already has it in stock and then go to the store and pick it up. Well, from a marketing perspective, if you're a hotel that is buy a retail function or close to retail functions, you can feature what those stores are and put into your messaging. Come stay with us. Make your purchases at the stores that are nearby with ensuring that they have the inventory available in the store and do the curbside pickup. That way they're ensuring that they get the product without having to have the delays that they're warning us all about. Now that doesn't solve all the problems, but it certainly may help that uh, issue and also help you for people that might be in secondary markets or in that drive market, you know, that are outside of the area that they don't have that Best Buy store or that large Target or that large Walmart, or they might not be in stock at their stores that they do have in that market, but they find one in your market that does have it and they make the purchase with the delivery of curbside pickup or in store pickup, whatever way they want to, however safe they feel. And you are the conduit that they come and literally you say, hey, stay with us and then go pick up your stuff (laughs) and have a wonderful holiday and then go home. So these are little grains of rice that make a bowl. These are the things that uh, you can target now in your messaging, in your content, both on social that you can schedule for with good graphics, good information, good content. In your ad campaigns, featuring your deals that and offers that you have right now for people to stay with you right now into the holiday season and through, okay, that you can say, hey, family, stay with us so you can enjoy dinner with grandma. Hey, come in and stay because you can go to Best Buy just down the road and pick up your stuff. Whatever that messaging is, you can do use the tools that we mentioned, like Promo Republic and Social B and others, but those two are the few ones we featured today. But keep in mind that all these things that we're talking about are different than any other holiday that we've had, like, in, like any other. Also, too, historically, um, for our southern hoteliers, or those that don't get snow, you know, southern Texas and Arizonas and the New Mexicos and so forth in certain regions, and Floridas, and Louisianas, um, that... We usually had good ads ready in the breach that as soon as the cold snap happened up north and stuck, usually somewhere Thanksgiving-ish on, we would do a lot of campaigns like, now is the time to head south. This is it. It's cold up and it's going to stay cold. Come on down where it's warm and happy. Well, we're going to be fighting the COVID safety issues at this point. We're going to be looking at how do we get people to want to make that kind of distance travel. It might be a drive travel. You might look at what feeder markets exactly you're looking for, how long it would take for them to get down to you, what they would need to do to get down to you, where they would need to stay in the interim, and maybe work out relationships with those markets to say, let's offer a route deal. People coming from Cincinnati may have to stay at where first, and then where second before they get to us? Well, maybe we can work out some sort of brand relationship. If you're a brand, talk to a brand that is in that market saying, hey, let's look up this whole road deal. Let's focus on Cincinnati to get down here, but they stay with you before they get to me, whatever it is. So there's lots of creative ways to rethink what we're doing for our holiday season. Again, a holiday season like no other. And these are the things you should be doing about it. And that brings us to our news and show review. Now, this week's hospitality news that you should know. So we had fun. Um, you know, we have huge uh, co-host lists sometimes. We're, we're multiple talking heads, 10 people, 11 people. And then we have those that are just a handful of people, five or so. We did have the privilege of having Mr. Griffin Sandberg from uh, Screen Pilot join us. Griffin hasn't had the chance. He's been busy as heck these past few weeks. And it was nice to see him come back onto the show with us. We also had Mr. Dean Schmidt with uh, uh, MetaSearch Marketing and, Meta- and Basecamp Meta. And of course, if you haven't figured that out, he does meta search. We also had Stuart Butler from Fuel Travel, CEO of Fuel Travel, brilliant man, and Mr. Tristan Hayward with Three and Six Marketing Agency uh, across the pond, a small little island called England, in a little township just north of there. Um, brilliant people. Where he says digital marketing without the 
just um, oh, what is their slogan? It's a great slogan though. Dishonesty. That's it. Didn't work without the dishonesty. Uh, we had fun, fun conversations. We really were talking about. I brought in the topics associated with the new forms allowed with, and we'll bring this into the podcast uh, in more detail of OTO and CTV uh, opportunities, where you know that all these cable cutters and all this internet. TV that we're able to do now, the Hulus, the Slings, the ATTV TV Nows, the Fubos, all these ones have their own advertising capabilities. And these are very hyper-targeted uh, geographically, demographically, uh, by show and context and timing of days. So you have all this new opportunity to do very targeted video ads. Um, and if you don't believe me, just if you have any subscription to those, you see those times when they don't have one to fill and it says commercial in progress because they don't want to show the one that's on the show that you're watching because they didn't pay for you as an audience. Well, you can buy that if that's the audience you're looking for and show up in front of the people that you're most interested, the targeting, the localization and so forth. So we had a great conversation about that and is it viable for hoteliers? Well, of course, but there's lots of steps that you need to, as Stuart always points out, make sure the block and tackle is done before you start going off into these little venture tangents. But if you have all your basics done, your PPCs, your your SEOs, all your CRM stuff working the way it should be, and you've exploited those as best you can, and you're looking for more avenues of opportunity, then these are definitely viable ones that you need to have content for that you can put in. It doesn't have to be amazingly brilliant videography. It has to be good enough for it to convey the message without it being cheesy, cheeky, or cheap. So we had that fun conversation. We also got into the conversation of organic Google's meta search potential is it for real are they really going to say even if you don't pay we'll drop something in for you because we need somebody in the meta search uh hotel finder for you uh had some fun dialogue with that dean was very instructive as to what his belief is for that um we also talked about is high tech virtual coming at the end of this month uh worth it this year uh stuart made some very interesting uh observations he is one of those that will be participating that is paying for a virtual booth uh his company and is going to be there is that because of it being virtual and being for the price point that it is um, there's gonna be a lot more people there that don't normally go which is going to open up those people to a whole new audience those that are going to be at high-tech virtual as booths that they wouldn't have had because high-tech was always very expensive to go to it wasn't just the actual logistics cost of hotel and flight transportation what have you it was the actual tickets too it was just a downright expensive place to go to and not a lot of hotels could send more than one if at all anybody if they weren't looking at for things that were at high tech and high tech had diversified itself an awful lot so he said this is going to be very interesting high tech for people to be able to see for the first time perhaps all the things that high tech can represent for technology um we also i brought into the conversation about vr uh, we also brought about AR. I, I talked about uh, Amazon and its little testing of the waters of its new VR travel program. Uh, I responded to a hotel net, a hospitality net uh, dialogue on LinkedIn and one of their articles, obviously, as to what I thought about Amazon and whether they're trying to get into the travel space. But we really wanted to focus on the VR potential and that there is a segmented market for those who are physically unable to travel. VR may be uh, uh, not a replacement but um, a surrogate value of being able to say at least they get to see some things and experience some things that they wouldn't be able to physically be able to do anymore. I know for myself, I don't think I can go up uh, the face of El Capitan <laughs> as a mountain climber, but you can do the VR experience where you're just as much there and getting all the vertical you want. So with that, great show. It took about two hours for us on the show as usual. Um, the news article that we didn't get to go to or talk much about, which I find it worthy of us bringing to the podcast today, is Travel Zero, 10 Key Takeaways from WIT Experience Week. Um, I found this interesting because it repeats a lot of what we bring into the show organically without knowing that this was a mainstream conversation with others. And it makes it very fun. I'll run through them very quickly just to give you a sense of this. Number one, be prepared to unlearn everything so that you can learn something new. If anything about this podcast we keep talking about, it's something like that. It's you can't keep looking at the way you used to do things as the way you're going to do things in the future. Uh, and you have to constantly unthink what you thought you knew to rethink what it is you're capable of doing. Looking for those grains of rice to make a bowl of rice for, for revenue, so to speak, that you just wouldn't have thought about before as being worthy of consideration, but now might be the saving grace between enough of them to actually sustain cash flow. Number two, travel will get smaller, tech will get bigger. If anything goes to the high-tech conversation we had in the live show and also in general, 
if as a company you're thinking you're going to be able to take your traditional technology you had going into the COVID crisis and thinking it will still keep afloat for you to get out of the COVID crisis, you're sadly mistaken. Technology is evolving based upon the demands of our guests who are wanting things from keyless entry to the rooms, to a touchless communication with the hotel, to potentially more answers and more engagement and more video and all the other things we talk about on the live show and on the podcast that require technology changes. Better CRM, better identification, better answers to guests, better information for the guests, turning more into answer, better and heightened guest services. All these things technology can provide that if you don't change and invest into the technology, if you're wanting to stay into business, you're going to find yourself mm, struggling to stay in business. Number three, the fight for survival will accelerate big scale tech transformation. Even old tech gets hip again. This conversation was a little long. Um, you know, I think the key element that they brought as an example was QR codes. I've been a fan of QR codes. I've been told that's dead man walking technology, so forth and so on. Well, having gone back and forth to Asia for many, many times over a couple of years, uh, QR codes were on everything because it was the best, most, e most convenient way of communicating because of the diversity of languages to get you to the point where you could understand whatever was going on. I would watch TV shows and there was a QR code in the corner and it was all in Chinese, but then I hit the QR code and then all of a sudden, magically, the translations were coming on my phone. So lo lots of things like that. The old technology as they referred to it, like QR codes was the example they gave in relationship to that. Number four, think different about growth, sunset, the peripheral stuff. This goes back to the conversation of what market segments are producing, what ones you wish produce but aren't, they just go on a shelf. Don't keep thinking that you're going to revive your corporate travel. Don't keep thinking you're going to revive conferences. If you yourself are one of a dozen, two dozen, three dozen other companies in the market that are trying to do the same thing, and you're not the lead person at the beginning of this, you're not going to be the lead person now. You can be creative, innovative, and, and certainly try different things, but it, it is not going to be the segmentation contribution that it used to be before. The number five was go big or go deep. Um, this goes back to the hyper-targeting the uh, localization, drive marketing. Uh, if you're going to do it, go into it. Go chase it. Segment it. Be granular. Be hard at it. And it gives an example that sometimes you can also go large where it says, like, I'm going to go over and diversify my language you know, and, and try to see what market's broader, but because of a different reason, maybe language, I can bring them into me because they, they have reasons to come to my market. Number six, activism, activism and recovery. This is what we kind of a little bit talked about yesterday, uh, or yesterday, excuse me, last week uh, in regards to are you spending to survive or spending to thrive? You have to choose whether you are going to stay on life support or whether you're going to try to be that business that garners market share while there's market share to be gathered as low as the demand might be so that you can begin to build even on the lower market that you have because you're the only one willing to do it. Number seven, the rise and rise of communities. <laughs> this is talking about the fact that we are looking at different segmentations. We're looking at different modalities of demographics that are based on different criteria of interest. Now, safety is a thing where we never, seven months ago, had that as a concern. Other than traditional safety of you know lights, cameras, locked doors, uh, what have you. Now we're talking about health safety. And that is just an example of the different communities that are talking about things that we never had to deal with before and keeping engaged with them. The, uh, what, what is opened around you, what's not opened, what are they doing, the safety protocols, what events and things and venues, all that communication that was just not for rot, uh, put out there saying, hey, we have this going on, this going on. Now it's a matter of, well, it may be going on, but these are the conditions. These by reservation only, there's a limit to this, there's a pre-purchase for this, or there's a pre-reservation for this, all those details. Number eight, capturing demand versus generating demand. Again, are you spending to survive or spending to thrive? This is looking for anybody that is looking to come to your market. You may not be able to generate demand. That's always been an open dialogue for revenue managers. But capturing demand is a different story. Looking for that still demand to your market, whether it is expatriatism, uh, expats having to self-quarantine, you know, like Hawaii, 14 days or so forth, if you're not... Uh, if you don't have a, a clean bill of health coming into the, the, the state, um, whether or not, you know, for Canada, same thing, you know, they have to go and have 14 days. Um, whether or not they're traveling because of medical reasons, whether maybe they're traveling for support or conv uh, convalescence care, um, on and on and on, uh, essential workers, uh, 
uh, major distribution transportation drivers, on and on and on. We've had this conversation in podcasts many times. Number nine, Asia's travel market will come out stronger in the long term because of the shift to domestic. That's just talking about the fact that if you're in that market, you're going to find a lot more inter-country travel versus international travel to the APAC region, and that it has to be redefined. It's not really directly applicable to the U.S. domestic at this point. Um, when goods don't cross borders, soldiers will. Uh, this is talking a little bit about the demand of essential travel between countries. I am, unless you're right on the fringe of both borders doing this, this is not really going to be a directly applicable one for you. But if you are, then there is still the demand of, of ebb and flow of traffic between the two countries or between countries. So there you have it. That is the wonderful Travel to Zero 10 key takeaways for WIT. Uh, Experience Week. So, remember, you can find us on Google Play, Apple iTunes, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Spotify, Pandora, tuned in. The list goes on 38, excuse me, 39 platforms and counting. We're also on Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant, and Siri. Just asked to play the Hospitality Marketing Podcast. No matter which one you may use, if you like the show, please rate us and leave a comment. That helps others find our um, our show as well. And also, we love the insight and feedback. And of course, you can always let us know if there's comp- uh, kind of topics and information you'd like to have us discuss. Also, if this is your first time hearing us, you can, of course, subscribe to our show on any of those 39 platforms and counting. And for an archive of all of our previous podcasts, you can go to hospitalitydigitalmarketing.com forward slash podcast. That's with an S. And don't forget our live video talk show that you can join and participate in every Friday at 1130 Eastern U.S. time called This Week in Hospitality Marketing, the live show. Simply go to hospitalitydigitalmarketing.com forward slash live. Again, thank you for the privilege of your time, and we look forward to talking to you next week. You have been listening to This Week in Hospitality Marketing, the podcast show 271 brought to you by Hospitality Digital Marketing in support of the HSMAI, the Hospitality Sales and Marketing Association International All Rights Reserved Copyright 2020.